now move on to the next item on the agenda that is Iran in particularly the case of human rights defenders we have six authors of the document we will start with interventions by the authors the first to speak is Bodin Valero one minute thank you very much well we're fully aware that the Persian regime in Iran doesn't respect human rights, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of association, anything to do with commitments to environmental protection, which uh, are obvious to us, are ones where uh, in Iran you can face hefty sentences. There are 273 people ex executed in 2018. Women are particularly at risk. There are film clips where people have uh, been seen taking their hijabs off and waving them around on sticks. This has become a symbol for women's rights across the board. Many of them were arrested, however, and many were thrown into prison. 112 women uh, female activists have been uh, arrested, and many of them te bear testimony to uh, torture. And they're the ones who are spearheading uh, a lot of the movements to defend women's rights. And they often end up in prison. And it's the world's responsibility to make sure that women can live in freedom. We can't just sit by silently when this sort of thing is happening. Nasran Sotudeh has been um, uh, condemned to 33 years in prison and 168 lashes. And if you include... Uh, uh, everything that she's already endured. It's 38 years she'll have to spend in prison. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Cornelia Ernst. In 2013, I met Nasreen Sotoudi in Tehran after she was released, and Bafa Panari, both were. Sakharov Prize laureates from 2012. They were released at the time now since June 2018. They are once again behind bars. Many others are also behind bars. Uh, 38 years of a sentence, 148 lashes. This is a huge scandal, an attack on people such as Sutu Day that we claim as our own because they fight for freedoms. So we call for the release of Nasrin Sotu Day and of the environmental activists, those that are campaigning for social rights on the streets, those that are campaigning for ethnic or social reasons and are thrown in jail, bloggers, journalists, they must all be released from jail. We need to repeat these calls time and again. We should never let up the pressure here. We are seeing an escalation of human rights violations. At such a time, an EU inter-parliamentary delegation uh, with Iran should not really be uh, put in abeyance. It hasn't met for quite some time, and that is really scandalous. It's a real shame for our chamber. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ernst. The next to speak is Maria Toshak. You have the floor. Thank you, President, Commissioner and colleagues. We in this European Parliament awarded the Sakharov Prize to human rights lawyer Nasrin Sotoudeh, and she continues to work tirelessly and with immense courage to defend ordinary Iranians in the many instances, the too many instances, where their human rights are not respected. But particularly, she was the lawyer of the many women protesting the compulsory hijab before Nasrin Sotoudeh was herself arrested again and imprisoned again and handed the preposterous sentence of 38 years in prison and 148 lashes. This is inhumane and unacceptable. And the High Representative Mogherini, she should publicly join our call for the release, the immediate release of Nasrin Sotoudeh. And I think that the obsession with the Islamic Republic's judiciary and other authorities of Nasrin Sotoudeh and their insistence to silence her should only encourage us to hear what she is standing for, the universal human rights of all Iranians, and she deserves our unequivocal support. Thank you very much. Next to speak is Mr. Khan. Mr. President, 
human rights defenders and trade union activists are arrested every day. They are arrested simply for campaigning for workers' rights, for environmental standards and against the death penalty. The Iranian government is harassing BBC Persian journalists and their families. EU Iranian Ural nationals remain detained after lack of due process and under vague charges. We heard this week that the prominent human rights lawyer Nazrin Sutude was given a long prison sentence for defending dissidents and those brave women who removed their hijab in public. By inflicting such a harsh sentence, the regime is making an example out of Nazrin and sending out a clear message that freedom of expression is not accepted. I have a message for the Iranian authorities. We will not stop calling for the release of Nazrin Sutude, Tahir Gadirian, Nazrin Zakari Radcliffe and all those who are unfairly detained and have been sentenced without a fair trial. You cannot silence civil society. You cannot repress ideas, especially with the whole world watching. For our part, we will continue to support Iranians who want democracy and freedom for their country. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Next to speak is Charles Tanak. The atrocious record of human rights in Iran is all too familiar to us in this House. Journalists and NGOs that do not conform to the wishes of the government regime face routine harassment and repression, a pattern that extends to all groups and individuals that seek to peacefully oppose or protest the actions of that brutal government. These actions amount to a breach of all fundamental rights of assembly and expression. Freedom of religion is also vigorously repressed as is demonstrated by the ongoing persecution of Christians, Baha'is and other minorities. In recent months, we have seen an intensification of the systematic campaign of house church raids as Christians are arrested and often violently interrogated merely for the fact of peacefully exercising their religious beliefs. Several hundred Christians have been detained in recent months alone. Women's rights are also severely curtailed in the country, with even the most limited forms of dissent being still punished. In 2018, 39 women were arrested for protesting against the mandatory wearing of the hijab. Executions in the country continue to remain extremely high, with a figure standing at 273 for 2018. It does appear, however, that the November 17 revisions of the anti-narcotics law represents a significant improvement in the dramatic reduction in their death sentences. It's a fundamentalist regime that has robbed its people of their rights through its domestic policies and all too often impoverished them via its international isolation. So clearly, this House really must condemn that regime and has done so for years, but so far, sadly, there's been so little change to witness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tanok. Now, Mr. Tunakellum, I give you the floor also one minute thirty. It's, uh, Iran is one of the worst countries in the world, considering the rights of it and freedoms of its citizens. Last year, Iran ranked second as, a, as for the number of executions, 273 of them. One may add numerous cases when a detained person was officially said to have committed suicide. Also last year, tens of thousands of people all over Iran stood up against rising costs of living, unpaid wages, corruption, political repressions and minority rights. They blamed the regime for wasting money for military and missiles, continuing costly expansion outside Iran, while ordinary people suffered more than ever. Our special concern is the fate of Nasrin Sadudeh, also her husband Reza Khandan, who just in January was sentenced for six years because of his peaceful protest against forced wearing of hijabs. The fate of arrested environmental and trade union activists. The fate of Marianne Akbari Monfaret, who has spent already nine years in prison for so-called anti-God activities. We call on the Iran government to, re to release unconditionally all human rights defenders, prisoners of conscience, conscience journalists and others. Yes, we once more call, urge and ask Iranian authorities to behave and change. Can we really believe that Tehran rulers will change their behavior, knowing very well that the regime cannot survive in conditions of free expression and independent press? Therefore, we urge our high representative to publicly reaffirm that respect for human rights will be a core component and condition for any further development. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalam, but time is. Uh, let me short.
On behalf of uh, EPP, uh, Mr. Christian Dan Preda, I give you the floor. Merci. Thank you, President. The sentence handed down to the Sakharov Prize laureate Nazrin Sotudu triggered uh, anger and indignation in international public opinion. It really is unbelievable. This sentence shows that the Iranian government is clamping down on activists. My group currently or recently organized or helped organize a hearing in the Subcommittee on Human Rights and dealt with the subject of environmental militants imprisoned in Iran. I would stress, uh, as I have already said in this chamber previously, I would repeat my call for respect for human rights. That must be front and center in our relations with Iran. I hope that the High Representative will continue to uh, apply pressure to that end. We have called for a mission to be sent, a delegation from the Subcommittee on Human Rights. That uh, delegation should go to Iran and I hope it will happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. 247 is an empty space for now, so Mr. Fleckenschmidt hasn't made it into the chamber as of yet. So the floor will now go to Bas Belder for the ECR. Thank you, well. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Forty years of Islamic Republic in Iran, and it's placed us in front of absurd questions. For example, where is the security threat in people in Iran reading the Gospel and the Scriptures? Um, the, Bi the Bible is the, the way to spiritual peace, the Word of God. And yet, uh, in Iran, a wife and uh, a preacher and his wife were falsely accused and sentenced to a double prison term of 10 years. And we've seen a worsening situation of persecution of Christians. And we should be saying as much. We should be um, uh, condemning this fact. I live in Apeldoorn in the Netherlands. And we have a Persian church where people can congregate without let or hindrance. And the public respect and authority of the Iranian mullahs has, have taken a tumble after 40 years. We should not be supporting the Iranian tyranny. We should be protecting peace-loving Iranian citizens such as Nasruddin Sutudeh. Thank you very much. Dziękuję bardzo. Pan poseł Jaromir Stetina, bardzo proszę. Mr. Stetina is next. Ladies and gentlemen, arbitrary arrests, tortures, court proce processes, that is Iran as we know it today. It is the number one country in terms of the number of executed per capita, which is shocking. In 2015, it was 977 execution. 2016, 567. 2017, 507. 2018, 273. Even juveniles and women are being executed, often in public, in the well-known drastic way, by hanging of a construction crane. We do have the case of Nasrin Sutudeh, an Iranian lawyer and uh, defender of the persecuted. Apart from a long prison sentence, she was also sentenced to 148 lashes. We do know Nasrin's name. She's a laureate of the Sakharov Prize. But I would like to extend my deepest respect to all those condemned and in prison whose names remain unknown. We try to name but a few of these in our resolution. Let us call things um, what they really are. The regime in Tehran is a criminal regime. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stettina. And now, Mr. Arnders Bistisen. Iran is a terror state. Iran is a terror state. It's a state that promotes terror here in Europe, in their own area of the world, but primarily a state that exercises terror against their own people, both environmental activists, uh, workers' rights activists, uh, religious minorities, or 
just people who are critical of the regime. Iran, unfortunately, is one of these countries in the world that uh, fight about getting the first place on the list of countries that uh, destroy uh, human rights. If we say that we have a value-based foreign policy, then we should take this seriously when we deal with Iran. However, I think that the Commission has focused much too much on agreeing with Iran when it comes to the nuclear treaties. They, it seems that the Commission accepts the terror being spread by Iran. Like, uh, let us use the sanctions as an efficient weapon against Iran, also when they uh, ruin human rights. Thank you very much. We're moving on to the catch the eye procedure. Mr. Pospisil is first to speak. Well, thank you very much, Chairman. I've been listening with great attention to this debate, and I'm very glad that we're having it because a few months ago, when we were discussing with Ms. Mogherini here the nuclear program in Iran, I felt that she was trying to brush the atrocities that Iran is perpetrating under the carpet, as it were, and I'm glad that we're calling a spade a spade at least today. This is a totalitarian criminal regime absolutely disrespecting human rights, and it is good that there is a represent representative of the Commission here. I hope you will convey our sentiments to Ms. Mogherini. In other words, that we are saying that our economic interests are not superior to human rights. I do sign up to this resolution. I contributed with a, a bit about um, oppression of religious minorities in Iran. And I think it's very good that we're sending a clear message here because of that because of the nuclear deal with Iran, we are not ready to tolerate all the crimes that the regime is perpetrating against human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anna Gomez is next. The more I defend the JCPOA, the more I defend the need to engage with Iran in all areas, the more I also defend that the EU must be vocal about human rights in Iran, about supporting all these brave men and women that in Iran fight for basic rights, like the women who every day gather with the white scarves to fight the compulsory hijab. When Afet visited Iran last September, last February uh, of last year, uh, we were confronted afterwards with the death in custody of activist, environmental activist Kavur Sayed Imami. Outrageous, outrageous against us is uh, because of uh, she's uh, Sakharov Laureate is the sentence against uh, Nazarene so today. But as many people have uh, uh, mentioned here, many others are suffering in Iran and we can't tolerate that. The, the sentence against Nazarene so today is also and foremost, an affront against the Iranian civilization. It's outrageous. We cannot accept that, and uh, Federica Mogherini has to be absolutely vocal about that. Thank you very much. The floor goes to Mr. Demis Mecker. Yeah, we so, who remembers Nazarene Sotodir, the Iranian human rights advocate, uh, lawyer, was in 2012 our winner of the Sakharov Prize. Now, Nazarene couldn't receive her award herself because she wasn't allowed to leave her country. Iran was one big prison, and that is still the case today. Nazarene has been sent to prison for 33 years, and uh, apart from that, she's been condemned to 148 lashes. 33 years and 148 lashes simply because she took up the cause of women who were protesting against the obligation to wear the hijab. The um, worst sentence has been handed down for activists for years, and uh, CEOs in Iran have confirmed that this happens more and more. They're increasing the repression in Te Tehran. The trials are mostly laughable, but the penalties are no laughing matter. And why is Iran becoming more and more insolent? Because it can get away with it. Iran feels that they're completely at liberty to lock up opponents and to mete out harsh punishment. And as long as we don't make it clear to Tehran that there are consequences for this, Commissioner, nothing about this will change. Thank you very much, Mr. Very proud of Fabio Massimo Castaldo. Mr. Castaldo. Grazie Presidente, cari colleghi, Nasrin Sotudeh è stata condannata a 38 anni di carcere e a 148 frustati. 
Uh, 38 years of prison and, and 180 uh, lashes have been awarded to this person. This is for a sacker of winner who has redefined human rights offender. And he was put in prison because of this, arrested last June. The verdict, as was the case for the whole of the case, which led first of all to the arrest and then the sending to prison of Nasreen, is unacceptable. The only explanation we can find is constant harassment of journalists, lawyers, human rights defenders. So many of these people have been sent to prison just for speaking out against the government. Iran has to release Nasreen, as it does as well with all other political prisoners. Colleagues, as we know, a great deal of work remains to be done with Iran at the political level in terms of defending the nuclear agreement, which is so hard to reach. However, in the face of so many violent and flagrant violations of human rights, we have to ring the alarm bells. The need to have high-level relations with Iran should not prevent us speaking out loudly and clearly, making it abundantly clear that certain violations of rights simply will not be accepted. Dziękuję, Fabio. Pan poseł Bogdan Zdrojewski, bardzo proszę. Mr. Zdrojewski. Nie zajmuję się Iranem, ale zajmuję się problematyką bezpieczeństwa. Z tego też powodu... I'm not following the situation in Iran particularly, but I do follow security policy in general. So I'm happy to take part in this discussion. What makes me sad is a lack of consistency on our side. We've talked about Pakistan and Iran in previous debates, issues relating to security, migration, and now we're discussing human rights, where the various laws that have been passed in Iran against human rights defenders and against women, we've talked about the tragedies that some of these people face but we need to be tougher we need to keep going making certain that we send documents to various governments which all carry the same message so more consistency is what we need thank you thank you says the president Julie Ward the situation of press freedom in Iran is very concerning. I'm particularly worried about the BBC Persian service journalists who have become a target of Iranian authorities. The persecution against BBC journalists started in 2009 when the service launched satellite television. However, recent measures have escalated this persecution against the journalists and their families. This persecution includes a gender dimension, as it is directed primarily against women, staff and their families. Iran's record on the treatment of women is infamously poor. The recent senten sentencing of the human rights lawyer Nazrin Soutadeh to 148 lashes and 38 years in prison is particularly despicable and comes shortly after the appointment of a new hardline head of judiciary. As the UN investigator on human rights in Iran, Javed Rehman, said, patterns of intimidation, arrest, prosecution, and ill treatment of human rights defenders, lawyers, and labor rights activists signal an increasingly severe state response. Dziękuję bardzo, pan poseł Jose Ignacio Faria. Thanks very much, Mr. Faria. Dobrigacio, President. Thank you, President. There are countless uh, occasions on which uh, we have denounced a lack of democracy or lack of respect for human rights and crimes against humanity committed by the Ayatollah's regime in Iran. Of course, they perpetrate on their own citizens. There could be no concealing the fact that Iran is the most repressive country in the Middle East, the one that it, it executes more people per capita than any other country in the world. Human rights defenders are no exception to the bloody actions of the regime, particularly the Revolution Guards who, who've uh, killed and imprisoned thousands, particularly women who are being uh, tortured or, or worse just because asking for gender equality in the country. The regime in Iran is a stain and a disgrace for the international community. 
the the, the way the regime behaves is like the very worst kind of animals. After 40 years of a brutal clerical dictatorship, 80 million Iranians are saying enough. They're saying enough. Thank you very much, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Faria. Judy Curtin. There are many human rights violations being committed by the Iranian regime, as we've heard this morning. But I'd like to focus on one group of people. The Iranian authorities have been systematically targeting BBC Persian staff and are moving on to the staff of other European um, broadcasters as well. Most of those staff are based in London and been, their families in Iran have also been targeted. Many of those affected are EU Iranian dual nationals, mostly British Iranians. 152 staff have been subjected to an unfair asset freeze, freezing injunction since 2017, and their families have been subjected to arbitrary arrests, travel bans and harassment. But I'd particularly like to raise awareness about the sexualized defamation campaigns which are being waged against brave female journalists at BBC Persia. And I would call on the EU to no longer be silent about this attack on European women, European journalists. We have a duty and a responsibility to defend free journalism. I welcome today's resolution coming the same week that these concerns are raised in Geneva at the UN Human Rights Council as well. Thank you. Thanks very much. Mr. Polchin. Thank you, President. I, for one, would like to also condemn the Iranian regime, similarly to my colleagues. This is a regime of terror that is imprisoning, torturing its own citizens. And. Uh, people are being persecuted, human rights basically do not exist in Iran. We are again and again talking about these problems concerning Iran and we have to defend and stand by those who are fighting to change the regime in Iran. Please, Commissioner, could you inform Mrs. Mogherini about the fact that our opinion of the parliament is different to her opinion concerning Iran. We are very strictly standing against this regime of terror. We cannot be complacent in this respect. And please uh, also change the opinion of the commission, Commissioner, because our opinion is different. Thank you. Commissioner Nimitza. To wind up the debate. Yeah, no. honourable members, just a few months ago, on 10th of December 2018, the international community marked the 17th, 70th anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. On the occasion, High Representative Federica Mogherini published a declaration on behalf of the European Union, in which she emphasized that support for human rights defenders, including women human rights defenders, is at the core of the EU external human rights policy and one of its major priorities. A few days later, this commitment was underlined by honorable members of the European Parliament during a debate on Iranian human rights defender Nasrin Sotudeh, who just a few days ago at the time was, convinced, uh, was convicted and sentenced in connection with her work to promote universally recognized rights. Our deep concern on her conviction was expressed immediately in a statement. Our commitment to support human rights defenders is true 365 days throughout the year and not only on 10th of December. Indeed, as part of our diplomacy, we closely follow the human rights situation in countries around the world, including in Iran. A cardinal aspect of this task is working to support the work of human rights defenders 
and ensure as far as possible that they are not subjected to harassment or detention. With respect to Iran, this extends to closely following the situation of Mrs. Sotudeh and other individuals, including, for example, the group of eight environmentalists who were detained in January last year and who are facing extremely serious charges. In Iran and in other countries, human rights defenders, including human rights lawyers, do in invaluable work. This includes providing legal representation to members of vulnerable groups, representing juvenile offenders facing the death penalty, working to protect women or members of ethnic and religious minorities. All too often, however, this work is met with repression or convictions and imprisonment on security-related charges. This is inconsistent with the Universal Declaration and with the International Covenant on Civil and Political uh, Rights, which Iran ratified in 1975 and which commits Iran to ensure that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrests or detention. No one shall be deprived of his liberty except on such grounds and in accordance with such procedures as are established by law. As clearly reflected in the latest conclusions on Iran adopted by the Council on 4th of February, while we are committed to the full and effective implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the European Union policy on Iran is based on a balanced and comprehensive approach critical when there are these divergences and cooperative in case of shared interests. In line with this approach, the European Union has repeatedly called on Iran to provide human rights defenders with an open, stable environment in which to conduct their work. The European Union has also consistently raised individual human rights cases with the Iranian authorities at all levels, including in the framework of the EU-Iran high-level dialogue. We are strong supporters of the mandate of the UN Special Rapporteur for the Situation of Human Rights in Iran and encourage the Iranian authorities to grant him access to the country. Finally, our member states have also raised the case during their own bilateral contacts with the Iranian authorities. We strongly believe that these efforts have contributed to certain positive developments that we have noted in recent years, including the decision to amend Iran's anti-narcotics legislation in November 2017, which has resulted in a dramatic reduction in drug-related executions and which in itself is a positive step toward, forward in human rights. We are continuing to advocate for further improvements in this regard, including an immediate moratorium on the execution of juvenile offenders. We continue to call for the release of all Iranian human rights defenders. Those who are detained should be afforded timely access to a lawyer of their own choosing be allowed to communicate with their family members, have access to adequate medical care, and not be subject to any form of mistreatment. We are encouraged by the attention paid to this issue by members of the European Parliament, and will continue our effort to work together with you in order to promote a better environment for human rights defenders across the world, including in Iran. Thank you. Dziękuję bardzo panie komisarzu Mimica. Dziękuję bardzo, że nasz głos brzmi. Znaczy... Thanks very much, Commissioner. Thanks very much to everybody who took part in the debate. We've got draft resolutions in the APP, the Socialists, the GUE, a total of six. They will be voted on later today. That's the end of the discussion.